Hi, James. Hi, Leslie. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm in Seattle in our, in our home in the neighborhood of Denny Blaine. This is our TV room. And behind me, we have a, um, uh, a Sam Levi Smith um, painting, which is made of uh, bleached out covers of books, which included medical books, which may have left out the story, you know, of African-Americans and the medical history of the country. So this is one of my favorite paintings. So that's what you're seeing behind me. I do have Chihuly works around the house, but I'm not going to take you on a tour of the house right now. because We've got other, other things to tend to. <laughs> that's a very cool piece of art. How, what, what is the, is it, is it, um, what's the, what's the finish on top? It, it, it feels sort of waxed but it's really the covers of the books themselves and they're sort of worn and then there's paints and then it sort of feels like it's stripped away in places but you can see when you when you get up close to it you can see the texture of the covers themselves well now i know what to do with some of my old books you've given me a good yeah. weekend project <laughs> <laughs> exactly I'm always so inspired when I see pieces of very creative art and I'm always thinking I have some art in me, um, but yeah, I haven't gotten around to it. I thought maybe during the lockdown I would, but, um, but that didn't happen, so. We've got to make more time for that. That was my, my goal was to do more writing during this time. And I did a lot of it in the beginning and then my schedule started to fill up again. So I could get back to my writing practice. That's nice, yes. I, I spend a lot of time cooking and making drinks. So that was, <laughs> that was I, know. Uh, I think you told me a long time ago, you're going to cook for me and make me a drink. So I'm, I'm holding you to that. <laughs> yes, soon, I hope. Yes. <laughs> I'm actually here in our um, uh, New York Design Center showroom at 200 Lex. And it's great to be here. I'm not here every day, but the days I'm here, it's it's it makes it more special. And and you can see behind me some of the some of the new works um, from you guys um, that we are so proud to have in our showrooms. Um, so it's very inspiring, and clients love it. So the clients coming in love to see the the works. And so I think it's super exciting to be in the showroom today for for this um, for this webinar. Let's. This is our new showroom. Um, we just opened it um, in July, and uh, we had moved from so from our showroom in Soho up to up to the uh, New York Design Center. Um, so it's great because it's sort of one stop shopping for designers, and um, especially during these times, it's easy for them to move within the building than have to go to various different showrooms around the city. <clears throat> Well, I was so impressed. I mean, before I met you personally, um, I just wanted to show you that I bought a couple of my favorite pillows. I thought I saw oh, that behind you. <laughs> Birdie Block. And I, I'd love a couple more, but um, I found these, you know, in London in one of Paul Smith's stores and then looked into it and realized this was a collaboration between Paul Smith, who we love, and the rug company. And I just thought, what a great job you guys have done um, working with select artists and designers to make these bespoke um, series of works. And so that, that really attracted me to even thinking about um, talking to Dale about doing a project with you. And then- so when we were I, in motion even before you and Dale and I spoke. Yes. Yes, that's great. I remember asking Dale, well, what would you think about doing something like this? And, you know, we'd been approached um, by someone who wanted to do rugs years and years ago, but the quality of the rug and, you know, the way that the designs were, were you know, being used was just not quite up to snuff, up to the level of quality. And we thought if we're going to do this at all, we've got to do it the best way, the right way, the highest quality way. And you guys are the ones that really showed us um, what's possible. That's great to hear. I love the um, image, I'm sure we'll show it later to everyone of Dale um, standing on, on one of the rugs. Uh, yeah. It's a, an iconic, strong image, isn't it? Really colorful, really quite color pop. And so that's in, that's in your studio. Is that, in your stu is that where that picture was taken? Yeah, the boathouse studio in a room called um, Dale calls the library, 
And uh, so he's standing in there with all of those, speaking of books, it's all artists, uh, books on artists shown by their covers only. And then you have a window full of his uh, Venetians, which that window looks out onto Lake Union, which is a working lake in Seattle. And in that building, that's where the glass blowing happens. So downstairs from where that picture was taken, we've got our whole team, which works every day making uh, wonderful things out of glass. Amazing. But you haven't, you haven't visited us yet. I know. Well, I was, I was, you know, in my mind, I was thinking we would all be together for the launch in person in Seattle, but um, maybe another time. Definitely. Yes, because I know I, I would so love to see that and um, and see some of the inspiration for some of these rugs as well, too. So um, good. Well, I think we can go ahead and get started and welcome everyone. I'm James, the CEO of the Rug Company, and with me today is Leslie Chihuly, the CEO of um, Chihuly, and um, I've, you've seen me, if you've seen our webinars before, you've seen me before, so I'll let Leslie introduce herself, um, and then we'll start with some of the um, specifics on the amazing new collection that we have to show you today. Great, well, um, thank you for having me, and thanks for putting this together. Um, Leslie Chihuly, I said, I'm broadcasting from my living room in, in Seattle today. And um, I have been working with Dale for 27 years. And my first uh, role in working with him was the project director for Chihuly over Venice, where we took the chandeliers that we'd made in four countries and ended up taking them and hanging them over the canals of Venice. So that was sort of my, my first project with Dale. But we have been working together, growing together, having a family together uh, for a long time now. That's amazing. And I'm here in our 200 uh, Lexington Avenue showroom at the New York Design Center in New York. And as a sneak pre, if I go like this, you can see one of the, <laughs> and if I go like this, you can see another one. And so that's a little bit of a sneak preview. We'll go through some of the other images and the inspiration today. Um, but um, thank you all for joining us and really excited to share with you some of the inspiration and, and some of these new beautiful rugs and how it came about. So so I was thinking, I was trying to remember, Leslie, how long ago we had um, breakfast, you and Dale and I had breakfast in, um, well, I think we had dinner in London, and then we met in New York as a follow-up. Um, it seems like, was it two and a half years ago? I think it must have been around that time, right? Two to three-year range. Yes. Definitely. So, yeah, so a lot of um, love and time and um and collaboration has gone on um, over these past couple of years um, to end up where we are today. And I mean, for the rug company, we're very proud of these rugs because you know it was it's something that made us nervous. How do you how do you interpret something so beautiful in 3D into into a flatter surface um, and and to you know to live up to the reputation of of the work that Chihuly does. So. I hope um, Leslie, you and Dale and the team are, are proud about what we've been able to achieve together. We certainly are here. We're and, very proud. And um, yes, I think the, the, you know, our weavers in Nepal did an amazing job of interpreting and uh, the use of silk and whether you're up close or far away, like you can see Rosette behind, behind me, um, you can just see how it comes to life almost in a 3D way and, and really does shimmer and reflect. And um, just it, if we start by looking at some of the inspiration to how we chose, um, how we chose some of the designs that we did, um, Maybe we'll just take a step back and, and, and talk to you, Leslie, about how, how does your design process work in general, though, and, and what these were inspired by something, but in general, how do you start your, your design process? Sure. Well, I wanted to sort of go back into, you know, the annals of history a little bit to um, talk about the fact that in the very early 60s, Dale was um, a student at the University of Washington in the Interior Architecture Department, which no longer exists. But there was a wonderful woman there named Hope Foote, who was a weaving uh, instructor. And Dale really started making things in the sense in when he started weaving. He was a pretty good weaver. And he made these beautiful wall hangings, which you'll see some pictures of uh, later. And that was the first time that he started incorporating uh, or using glass at all. He wasn't blowing glass. He'd never seen blown glass before. But he loved, you know, 
stained glass windows and he loved the impact of light moving through glass. And so he would take these small pieces of glass, melt them in a small kiln and then weave them into these um, amazing pieces, which you'll see, uh, which are very fragile, which we don't have very many of, but when you see that, you realize that Dale was into that material. He also made furniture. I have some, we have some early pieces of furniture that he made but he was always interested in interiors and how work uh, appears in an interior or in an architectural context. So his first architectural context would have been his mother's basement. And he was very proud of the work that he did in decorating his mother's basement. So that was really, I would say, project number one. And then as he went from there, you know, this, this idea of doing everything, you know, with your hands, he, he blew a bubble one day in this small kiln. And that was the first time he had really done anything like that. He called his mentor, said, I'm so excited I've blown this bubble. And that started the whole journey into the material of glass. So, you know, you have 50, 50 plus years of experimenting with the material in scale, in color, in use, and you have everything from individual objects, small, very delicate baskets and cylinders to more elaborate installations, which we do a fair amount of, you know, but like the piece that hangs it, um, that hung at the Kew Gardens in the, in the glass house. So the design process is, I don't know that it's an exact um, formula that I can lay out for you, but it's a lot of there's been a lot of experimenting with the material because I think we have to remember that nothing like this had ever been done in glass. And for Dale to develop the, not only the ideas, but the team and the skill to work in the scale and to have that uh, facility that he does have in terms of understanding how, how the work will, will happen and appear um, and how the viewer will experience it in, in an architectural space, I think is a unique set of talents that he, that he has. And it comes from that interior architecture background, I think. So you mentioned he started with a small bubble and did, did he go large scale right away or did he sort of gradually build up to these wonderfully um, amazing scaled pieces? No, I think it was a very long process of building up um, in scale because even the equipment that you need to be able to blow glass at the scale we do now, the size of the kilns, I mean, you have, these all have to be custom made, but he was very much learning the material and exploring the sort of organic nature of the material and he wanted to let it do what it wanted to do versus, you know, this sort of more design strict formal um, functional use of glass which you which you know or you're using molds or you're making the same glass or the same vase over and over he wanted to he wanted to explore that spontaneous aspect of what hot glass can do and so these these forms began to evolve over many years and if you see some of the early ones you'll see they're very opaque they're not particularly colorful they are very delicate and, and small. And then you just look at it over, over time and you see that facility and, and technical expertise of the team that's able to make things like a Rotolo. I don't know if we have a picture of one of those or one of these giant Persians that make up that sculpture you saw at Q. The, um, the, the, speaking of Q, the exhibition was, was amazing um, and so exciting for me because we were in the middle of starting our collaboration and seeing some prototypes come back and and being there at queue and seeing the the work in person in 3D was was just amazing. And so if you look at something like um and, and we'll show images of, of our rugs actually installed at queue in, in a little bit, which was an exciting opportunity for us to shoot our rugs in, in queue gardens in London. So if you look behind my shoulder and you see Rosette, for example. Um, so this is um, a rug, I mean, you know, right off the bat, our, our team loved it, clients have loved it. It's been such a, such a great, um, um, uh, beautiful rug to, have, uh, to represent. So something like that, how, if you talk about Rosette, for example, what, what is the inspiration behind that and, um, and how did that come about? Well, I think interestingly, that rug is probably the most literal translation you look at that and you you see Chihuly or I do of course but I'm coming from certain knowledge but I think a lot of people have seen that form in Chihuly and it's a it's a flower like we call them Persians but 
it's a flower like form and and sometimes they're as much as you know 45 inches in diameter so we've uh if you think about for example the bellagio ceiling which you've probably seen that was one of the first places those were ever we figured out how to hang those overhead and that was a huge um innovation to to figure out how to mount the glass and hang it over overhead in a very public public space so that is a form that Dale has been at probably since the 80s and it just continues to recur in different different forms different colors different scales over the years so we thought that was a very classic classic Julie one to choose especially in the blue which we know people love blue <laughs> blue most everyone loves blue especially me so i only wear blue and I'll, my whole house is basically filled with blue things so um i don't know i remember um i don't i don't know how old it was but it was it was some time ago i don't know, I don't know when you put that installation in the bellagio but i mean i, I was just I, I was staying at the bellagio on a business trip and i walk in and i look up at the ceiling i was like wow it was it's mesmerizing in the midst of everything chaotic going around um, in, in Vegas. You sort of look up there and you're like, wow, this is like a peaceful moment. Yeah. 1998, that was when that piece went in. And it is certainly one of the most recognizable pieces in Dale's, in Dale's work, I think. So it's great. So we, so we um, in the end, we had lots and lots of ideas and lots of inspiration that you guys gave us. And, um, and we ended up producing together um, five amazing rugs. And so if we if we look at some of the imagery we have from here and um, take a look closer look at the designs, um, we, we can show them uh, in Kew Gardens as well, too, and talk to some of the um, um, further inspiration. So here is uh, once we said once again, we said as Rosette, um, this is in the temperate house at Kew Gardens that we the, the interesting thing about when we did this shoot, we had um, we only had two hours to do the entire shoot before the uh, museum and garden opened. And so uh, we were hustling to try to get as many great shots as possible. Um, and, and I think, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting juxtaposition just to show where you would have had um, your amazing pieces and, and now you have the rugs in the same space. Um, I think it was a great opportunity for us to see. And so, um, so um, Harvest, which is behind my other shoulder here, um, this is this is one of my favorite shots because you get the rich color of the um, of the lily pods behind and the lily pads behind and it's interesting just to hear a little bit about this piece as well too because this is a little bit um, this, isn't this a more of an opaque kind of glass um, as opposed to more of the translucent I, I, I don't know that much about the pieces well, but this is an interesting one and it in a sense it sort of ties back to weaving and to threads because uh, the imagery you see here um, is taken off of a cylinder and one of Dale's um, sort of a Native American cylinder looks and so what happens is when the glass is being blown you have this very small drawing made out of these threads of threads of glass and all those colors so every little dot you see was a was a little small thread of of glass. So when the hot glass is being rolled over that, we call it a drawing in threads of glass. It's rolled over that and then it, it expands as the, as the glass is being blown. And so you end up getting this more abstract kind of look. But if you were to look at the image of that before, before it was blown or before it was blown out into a full piece, you would have seen a very delicate little, what we call a thread drawing in glass. So I love the way the threads of glass relate to the threads of the rug and I love the way that the imagery sort of spreads out over that. So, so how do you get those threads into the glass? Um, what, is, what is the process to do that? Well first of all the threads are are made out of what well we call it cane and it's it's glass that's stretched out into very very thin thin threads and then it's cut and shaped into the pieces that make the small drawing. Then you have a big big piece of molten glass that is rolled over that and then when the glass is blown out the drawing expands you have to see it done but we have some videos of that being done we could we should have shared we could have shared that video today if we thought about it 
it's always great to see that. I mean, everyone loves seeing how our rugs are made by hand and, you know, it's one knot at a time. And all of a sudden you just go one knot, one knot, one knot. And six months later, you have the rugs behind me. I mean, they do take a very long time. How on, uh, I know it's hard to say, but but how, how long on average is, is from your, um, is your design process to get a finished piece? Well, if, if those, that, that drawing out of the cane and preparing for those for those thread drawings takes days building up to the day of blowing. But because it's it's hot glass, you have to it all has to happen in one one setting. So that piece, that cylinder might take a couple of hours to make once it once you're into the hot glass process, sometimes less. Um, but it's interesting. I, I remember going with Dale once to Italy and we're in the marble making part of the country and we went into a couple of marble um, uh, sculpting studios and Dale's watching them with chiseling away and the dust flying and he's watching this thing you know take shape over a really long period and I remember him saying I could never do that you know that's not my material <laughs> he likes the speed and the and the heat of the glass and the, and the immediacy of how it all has to happen in that in that particular stretch of time and do you and do you have um, I guess I guess what do you call happy accidents very often where you're, you didn't intend that to happen all of a sudden it came out this way and you're like wow this is amazing. I think that's very much part of the process. I mean you can look back now and say well that was R and D but really it was it was I talked about the early days with Dale in the hot shop just experimenting with the material and he still is how you know I mean how big can we go? I mean, and you can see behind this, that's Jim Mongre, and that's back in the early 90s, but behind him are the ovens where this glass has to go to anneal. So it goes from the punty there, you you cut it off at the end of the punty, but then it has to go into an oven. That whole piece has to go into an oven and cool down, and it has to stay intact. Sometimes the glass is too thin. We find out the next day it was too thin and it breaks. Sometimes it's too thick, it takes too long to anneal and it cracks. So there's a lot that goes into, you know, not only making this piece and getting it to this point, but getting it to, you know, the next day or the day after that. In fact, we have some pieces, this Rotolo work that Dale um, came up with a few years ago, it takes 10 days to anneal. So you've spent hours getting this piece you know, the way you want it with huge technical challenges. And then you go into the annealing oven and then to find out that it's got this tiny crack in it 10 days later, that really, that really hurts. But, but that's how you have to do it. That's the experiment. That's, you know, when you start pushing the material to its limits and you start making things bigger and thicker and more sculptural, you're just going to, you're going to have those mistakes, but you learn and they keep getting better. You know, I mean, it's wonderful to see. Still that's amazing um you know because it, it's I, I think not maybe not quite to the same extent but all of our rugs um are are one-of-a-kind pieces as, as well too because they all have a slightly different hand than, than whoever is is nodding them and uh, while while we they do generally look the same um our collection that we're showing today is a limited edition collection it makes it even more special um, and it's it's uh, if we look at some of the other pieces, pheasant is um, an exciting, really. It's one of my my favorites. Um, I just love the 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 silk and and the the way that it flows. I have a sample here, if you can see some how the silk is picking up um, beautifully in the in the rugs. And um, tell us a little bit about that design, Leslie. Well, that um, kind of goes a little bit more to the Persian that we talked about that was, you know, hanging overhead at, at Q. But that very well, that piece could have come out of a mold, what we call an optical mold. So when it was being blown, the hot glass was put in the mold, then spread out. And that's sort of how you get that. Well, I don't even know how we came up with the name pheasant, but I think it's really appropriate. I don't know if it came from you all or came from us, but I love that name. And I love the subtlety of these colors. And I love the the dance and the movement of, of the imagery and the pattern over the surface. Um, but I don't know if you would look at that and say, oh, that looks like a piece of Chihuly glass. But once you, you know, you know a little bit more, but you can see the connection. And I sort of love that little bit of mystery about it. 
And depending on where you stand, um, which direction the silk is facing, it looks different. And it takes on some, I'm looking at, we have it right here in our showroom and it takes on a very different look, I guess, much like the glass does, depending on what side of the rug you're standing on. Uh, and that's it's really particularly evident in that piece and the rich um, colors in this rug, I think are, are spectacular. Well, here's a, I'm sitting here. This is a small piece that is part of a group of pieces that's right here in, in my sitting room. But I don't know if you can see it, but you can sort of see these waves in the glass and you can see how that, and the stripes and colors, you can see how that turns into that, that pheasant look. Can, do you kind of get that from the image? Yeah, it looks, it looks well, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Depending on how you turn it to the light, yeah. And then poplar is another, um, going back to the blue theme, um, is another favorite. Um, this is uh, another beautiful wool and silk um, and, uh, and has you know, quite, quite great depth of color in the blues contrasted with the, with the lighter shades in here. Um, this is, um, I think, a, a fun shot. Um, once again, at Kew Gardens. And, and what about and what about this? What what sort of um, technique or collection would this be? Well, I, similar to you know we talked about the threads, but this is picking up um, bits of color onto hot glass and having that small bit of color spread out. So it's a, a little bit similar to the thread drawings we talked about earlier. But these are slightly bigger pieces of glass that we call um, jimmies that when you pick up in the hot glass and you blow it out, they kind of take on that more abstract form. But I love this. This looks like something you might see under a microscope. You know, it looks very... Um, looks like amoeba. Yeah, sort of, almost, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I going to say amoeba, but yeah, definitely. But another one, I love the subtlety. I love that the blues and the grays and the, and the, and the really creamy, clean um, base. I think it's fantastic. And this is, I think this is a great rug to use. Um, it's, it's very easy to use in, in, a, in, a, in a living room setting. Um, it's easy to place furniture on. I think this is a, another great, um, a great winner. And then the last design we have um, to show is, is cylinder. And this, I love, the, I love where this is. I love the, the sort of ref, the picking up the colors and the, um, and the more uh, cactus and, and sort of the Southwestern kinds of plants. Uh, I don't know if that was was inspired by that those colorways, but but where where do you get the color inspiration from in, in general? Because it, you have so many colors in your collection. Is is there is it is it a lot inspired from nature like like this setting? I think it's all very much inspired by nature. I mean, how can you not be sort of affected and inspired by you know your surroundings? But this one came particularly from those Native American cylinders. Um, and you can see the drawing in, in that went onto the glass. And I think I talked to you about those early days of Dale making these very translucent sort of nude colored, you know, almost smoky pale pieces that were uh, very subtle. And this was a revisit to um, that earlier color, sort of more of a white, but it doesn't look stark white, but he did a whole series where he revisited the just white and went more simple in the color and this is one of the pieces that that came out of that body of work very contrasting to the rosette or even the other um one behind you harvest. Yeah. so harvest. <laughs> very apropos at this time of year especially in the northeast um yeah Wow, so, so it sounds like that we, in the end, came up with a collection that covers quite a number of um, themes and, and periods in, in the evolution of, of, of Chihuly, right? I think that was the goal, is to take you know, the very earliest work to some of the most iconic and recognizable and, and do a really nice mix and, and really explore, as you say, this different color combinations and from something really bright and pop poppy for somebody who's comfortable going that direction to something very subtle um, that just almost disappears um, on the ground. So as we as we've just launched the the collection um, in the past um, in the past week, we've had such tremendous um, enthusiasm, not only amongst our design community, uh, but also amongst uh, Chihuly collectors as well too. So 
I think um, you have you have a great obviously a, a great um, fan and loyal fan base. So um, so I think that for us, you know, coming and seeing the rugs in person is great. Um, uh, also, they're on our website, but in in our showrooms around the U.S. and in and in the U.K. and Germany. Um, the rugs are all on full display and they will be um, through um, the end of the year. So um, in, in, in a, a setting behind me in an exhibition style setting. So please come in and visit us in our showrooms when you can. And in the meantime, um, the, one of the questions, if we look at some of the questions um, that, that people were, were submitting and interested in, uh, we talked about the Kew Gardens exhibition. Where where will you have future exhibitions? And I know people love to see in in the setting like a like a Kew setting. Um, it's amazing to see. Well, um, I think the first garden exhibition was at Garfield Park in a beautiful conservatory in a really tough part of town in Chicago, and that was in two thousand and one. And Dale had always loved greenhouses, and I've got we've got images of him from the 60s standing, you know, at Kew Gardens, looking up at that beautiful structure. Um, since then, we've probably done 22 or so garden exhibitions and we love working outside. I think Dale in the early days would just put pieces out in the lawn at Pilchuck, you know, the glass school that he founded almost 50 years ago. And it was just always a very instinctive, natural thing for him to put something outside and, and, and want to photograph it. So. We love working in gardens because we, we bring something really special to the gardens and we love bringing the audience of garden lovers together with the audience of art lovers. Um, and we just love the, the sort of the peace and restorative um, quality of what happens when you go into gardens and experience nature in that way. So we're really happy that even during the pandemic, we were able to still mount an exhibition at the Cheekwood Gardens in Nashville. They were two months, we were two months late putting it up but it's uh, gonna stay up through Christmas and early part of January. And so it's really great because you can see the work through the summer, fall and winter seasons there. So that'll, that's there. We're looking at a major exhibition in Singapore and I can't talk too much about it, but it's gonna happen in 2021 and we'll be announcing some things around that. Um, we've, had, we've got a museum show up right now in Naples, Florida at the Baker Museum. And we're just so happy that any of these institutions are able to open their doors even to smaller numbers of people so that people can experience the art. So we're gonna, we're just gonna keep going. We've got invitations to go back to Arizona, uh, to the, to the um, desert botanical gardens there. So we'll be looking at that. We've got potential projects for the city of Chicago, which we're very excited about, but that's all being having to be postponed because of the pandemic, but we've got plans for exhibitions that are booked out several years now. That's very exciting. I'll be in Naples at the um, end of December. So hopefully the exhibition will still hey. be up. Be it. Yeah, definitely. Good, good. Um, I guess um, if, if you look at, I mean, the, you know, I was marveling at Kew Gardens, the, the amount of work, but also the fragility of shipping all of these things as well, too. And, and I think you and I talked about it at one point, but, you know, it's, it's a massive undertaking logistically, isn't it, just to, just to move these pieces around? It really is. Some of these exhibitions have, you know, up to 14, you know, uh, containers full of glass. And we've innovated all of the, the way, you know, all of the packing procedures and we make our own boxes we have all of our material and each piece has to be wrapped separately so if you think about it you don't you would never pack an entire chandelier every piece has to be broken down and put in its individual place and and surrounded by, by either bubble wrap or or something or cushion to and we have very low breakage because we're, we've gotten really good at it over the years and the same team our same team packs it from here ships, goes to the other side, unpacks it, cleans it, packs it back up and sends it back home. So we're lucky to have a team that's very experienced, We've got a lot of institutional knowledge on, on the team. Yes, rugs aren't, um, aren't nearly as difficult to ship. So just wrap them up. Oh. They go. <laughs> that's so that's one of the things we don't have to worry about, luckily. Great. Well, um, is there anything else, Leslie, that I'm missing that you wanted to um, you want to comment on or, or tell everyone about? Well, I just wanted to ask you as a, you know, as a potential client, 
for one of your rugs. How do I, how do I go about, you know, getting a rug that fits, for example, my entryway at my house? I've had so many clients and friends asking me, well, how do I go about this? And I said, just, just go on the rug company website. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how that, how that works from your end. So, so our rugs um, can be uh, made into any um, size and shape. So if you want to do, you know, what, what, we, what we're doing a lot of um, now are staircase runners, in fact. So, you know, beautiful staircase runners or sizing them for a hallway um, so they can be made in, um, in different sizes and shapes. Round rugs are very popular now as well, too. The rugs that we've done with you are, are in rectangular shapes and we have them stocked. So if, if you want something, you know, now you can, we have a variety of different sizes. Um, you know, from six by nine to 12 by nine, nine by 12s and larger sizes as well too. So we have a variety of in, in stock, but you can also um, customize and and to, to the exact size you need as well too. And that does, as I said earlier, take about five to six months to, um, to produce. I but, think that's interesting sort of parallel with the way Dale works because we do, um, a fair number of commissioned art projects in the course of the year. And so if you, James, called and said, I've got this great entryway, the ceiling height is 40 feet. I want a chandelier sculpture that would hang and really fill that space. You know, we'd ask you to take, you know, get all the proper dimensions. We'd get all of the photography of the space and, you know, using all of this technology that we have. And then we would start a sort of a digital mock-up and we would show you a couple of examples of what we might put there. And then you would say, I really like that, but it's a little too, that's too heavy at the top, or I really don't like those colors or shapes. And we would work with that because of the vocabulary that Dale has developed in terms of these commission projects. We can play with the forms, we can play with the colors, we can play with the scale um, and take a client from kind of beginning to end in a relatively short period of time, probably not so unlike that four or five month, um, you know, period that you're talking about for the rugs. So I sort of like parallel. Yeah, it's, I think it's so important that you get the right size rug for your room as well too. And so, and, and so our design um, associates and consultants will help guide you through that as well too, because, you know, you don't want to sort of have your rug too small um, or you don't want it going all the way to the to the wall either. So, so I think it's probably not as an exact of a science as what you do, but uh, but certainly I think you know getting the right rug size is is important. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but shape you know can can be fun as well too. And so when when you look at you know different um, shapes and um, square, you know square is a beautiful um, is a beautiful uh, rug as well too. So it's fun to look at shape as well as um, as well as all the different um, colors we have in the collection. Yeah, so fun. Well, it's been so fun working with you, and I can't wait to hear you know how how this project develops and what people think about the different rugs and which ones they like the best and the kinds of spaces that they're gonna go in. We're really curious and excited to, to see how this evolves. And it's always when, when designers put them into their projects, it's always great to see those project room shots. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's very inspiring just to see how they've used them in ways that we necessarily wouldn't have thought of in, in different settings. So I'll make sure to send those to you as we get those, they're fun to look at. Great. Well, I hope to visit you in Seattle, um, maybe we next year. Hey. Okay. okay. It was wonderful. Thank you so much. We're so excited about our collaboration.